carries the muft like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He is un understanding and in is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strength to the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this on my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then, will my, what then is my reward? Just this. That is my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, and so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might, not, I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside of the law, I became one outside of the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside of the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might become that I might all, by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. 
There is a lot going on in the gospel message this morning. There is a visitation, a miraculous healing of a fever, likely a home-cooked meal and hearty conversation to follow, followed by a mass gathering. The text says the whole city was gathered around to see Jesus. Healings right and left, multiple castings out of demons, and then it stops. It's finally quiet. And Christ leaves the house in the darkness before dawn. He wanders to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Prayer is kind of a strange, miraculous thing, isn't it? Through it, somehow, we are heard and seen by the creator of everything. Yet, yet have we ever felt like we wanted to see God? Just to know God was there, for sure. I know I have. And we're in good company. Back in the day, the ancient Israelites were tempted time and time again with the desire to see a God. And so they created idols, crafted images that provided some sort of comfort. Yet at the end of the day, they could never be fulfilling. They were never truly God. In another way, I remember a cousin of mine who sometime in his teenage years felt this disconnect. He wanted to know God was there. He wanted to see God and just have that surety somehow. So he placed a small piece of paper on the ground before bed. It was misguided, testing God, And yet he prayed earnestly, God, if you would just move this tiny piece of paper one inch overnight, I know I'll be able to believe more strongly, have more surety, just be more confident that you're there. Please, God, just move it that one inch and I'll see you. And in the morning... That piece of paper was in the same old place. (laughs) Ah, this is tough, isn't it? We're people who like to prove things. We've lived our lives hearing, seeing is believing. We learned or are learning about the scientific method in school. Evidence, evidence, evidence. So what is Jesus doing a bit differently when he goes away so early in the morning to pray? How does prayer evidence God in a different way? Jesus is fully God and fully human. Humans, you and me, we need to nurture spiritual well-being to be well. I also think Jesus as God is also setting an example for us. The disciples can't understand it at the moment. They're busily hunting for him, needing to know what's going on. (laughs) There's some urgency. Everyone is searching for you, they say. Yet Jesus is showing them and us today an important aspect of our faith. We see God through prayer. We find God not always in a miraculous healing, casting out of a demon, but also in solitude. Let's hear the gospel again. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there... He prayed. Prayer offers a way to see God. But if you're like me, that still feels tough, far off somehow. 
Yet the promise remains. God knows what we are going to pray before we even say a word. God hears our prayers and God works with us through prayer. So to make this practical, for the next few minutes we have dwelling in Mark chapter 1 this morning. Let's talk about some options for ways to pray. Ways to follow Christ's example and take some time to just be with God. One idea is to take a daily Sabbath every day. There are a million ways to do this. Simply pray, sit in silence, photography, something that helps us disengage from work and engage with God. It can be for 30 seconds, a minute, 20 minutes, whatever, but just to cease, to say, God, I'm here. I want to rest in your presence for this short time. The word Sabbath means cease, to stop. Something I've done in the past is set a reminder on my phone to take that time during the day, maybe during lunch. Or we can carry something such as a cross or a stone, a little reminder in our pocket or our bag. Another option is called centering prayer. This is an ancient Christian method of contemplative prayer. And the premise is simple. Again, choose a span of time. It can be one minute or 30. But if you've got a buzzy brain like me and it's hard to focus, it's best to start with a shorter span of time. And then choose a word. It could be a prayer for something you're looking for. God, I need clarity. God, I need energy. God, I need to grieve right now. On the inhale, just breathe. Exhale, bring your word to mind. There's no expectation for the prayer. It's simply a posture allowing God to be with you and work in your heart. This method of prayer is more about being in the presence of God rather than saying many words. It's great for times we might not know what to say to God. And a final option for us today is to go for a prayer walk. This can be an outdoor stroll around the block (laughs) or a longer walk out to the crossroads or into the countryside. It could even be just indoors around the house or a building after work or your apartment. Or even if we are stationed in one spot, it could be done without walking. The practice involves praying for what we see or what we sense around us and for people or feelings that rise up as we move or look. It's very freeform and mindful. Inside, maybe our eyes land on a photo on the wall. We pray for those in the picture. Next, we see a bird out the window and we give thanks to God. Outside on Main Street, we could pray for each of the small businesses we pass, our neighbors who own them, how they give back to the community and support us all. We could give thanks for someone we see, for the clean air we breathe, and on and on, just as you're walking, whatever you notice and whatever bubbles up inside of you. These are a few options for different ways to pray. Daily Sabbath, centering prayer, or a prayer walk. You can also pray however the heck you want to. So (laughs) these are only three options. Um, One of the values of our faith is to pray without ceasing. 
by daily having time alone with God, we welcome God into more and more of what we do every day. These prayers lightly won't showcase God as plainly as a piece of paper moving. Yet again, we see God in lonelier moments and in solitude. And of course, we can see God everywhere, but for today, let's consider Jesus' example going off to a deserted place to pray, retreating from the bustle for a short time to commune with God, discern our next movements in life, to rest in the presence. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 843. Alongside our siblings, sisters, and brothers in Christ here and across the world, let us pray for the church, everyone on earth, all who are in need. Jesus, we love and praise you today. We ask for your intercession, your intervening in our lives. We honor your power in healing, your compassion, your example for us as a servant leader, a leader who rests in prayer. Remind us that true power is in humility. Empower us to make the brave choice to be kind, to listen, and to follow your example of healing. Help us offer a healing word to a neighbor today. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who moved among us as Jesus of Nazareth and abides with us and calls us daily as the Holy Spirit, help us see you. Refresh us today as this new week with an intention to, bring, to spend time alone with you. 
We love to gather, pray together, sing together, yet also help us follow your example to go to a deserted place to pray. Accompany us with your healing presence, God. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, collector of tears, we lift up our neighbors who are grieving, sick, or otherwise especially in need of your abiding grace and presence. Holy God, continue to abide with the families of Mary, Dennis, Linda, and Kristen and Jason. Thank you for your accompaniment also alongside Liz, Lee, Arlene, Sharon, Jeff, Don, Mike, Rick, David, John, Tom, Tammy, Joey, Brad, Jack, Lauren, Jim, Monica, and Jennifer. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you taught us not to heap up empty phrases, not to think we will be heard because of our many words in prayer. You told us you know what we need before we even ask. Christ, Redeemer and Resurrected, abide with us as we take a few minutes of silence to offer personal prayers to you or to simply abide in the presence of you. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we send our love as a community of faith to all peoples, all places, all situations of fear, danger, and injustice. Please continue to abide with all those in Kenya fleeing the gas fire there, those in danger from the deep freeze in Alaska, people escaping from a forest fire in Chile, and displaced neighbors all around the world. Spur us to love our neighbors as ourselves, our migrant neighbor, our refugee neighbor, our enemies, our neighbors we disagree with. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we praise you today for all these prayers and all prayers in our hearts, all we hold with sighs too deep for words. We offer these, trusting your goodness, which is running after us. Amen. And now, please rise and body your spirit to profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue worship with our offering. The number is 314. There's a typo in the bulletin, so offertory hymn is 314.
I'll have another one. Oh, there. Let us pray the offertory prayer. Everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation through Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll continue with the sacrament of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that in all times and circumstances, we should give you thanks and praise, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for setting this table for us and gathering us into one body this morning. Let's pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. After supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you do this, remember me. Everyone is welcome at the Lord's table. Please be seated, and the ushers will direct you forward.
strengthened by this meal at the table. May our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, (laughs) bless you, keep you, hold you in his grace, now and into life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 665. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.